Hey everyone, welcome back to another podcast with The Whole Truth. Today's podcast is going to be part two of the previous one I did. So basically I went through a live that Juliana had done. Um, I got like a heap of snippets of it sent to me yesterday and basically she's sitting in the car. Her and Brett have obviously had an argument and she's like venting to her followers. So um, I actually do agree with her in this video. You know, beforehand Brett didn't have a job. So he looked after the kids and he was like pulling his weight this way. Now he has a job. His kids go to daycare. He is responsible for half of the cost of the household. I believe, you know, they're renting a house. So he should be paying half it if he has a job. Anyway, so there was a couple of things that I didn't agree with. I don't really agree with calling your husband a fat motherfucker. Um, and she also outed his gambling addiction. So she has said before that he has like drug and gambling issues. We have heard her say that before. But... She claimed on this one that he'd actually stole just under six figures. So just under $100,000 she claims that he stole from her and has gambled it, which is some pretty wild allegations. But anyway, this is the next one. So I'm just going to probably try and break them up into like half hour ones. So if we get to a half hour, just go to another one. But I'm not going to like make you just wait in between. If I've done the parts to it, I will post them. So here we go. Like, at this point, you are spitting in my face. Right. So, you know, like... I don't even know. <clears throat> he gave it back to me. He said he forgot to give it. She's talking about the check here as well. So he's given her back the $600 check because he claims he forgot to give it. So it's not like he stole the $600 check. Not that it's going to be any good to him. It's going to be made out of the daycare. But he gave it back to her and said that he had forgotten to give it to him. And she's like pissed about this because she thinks that he's done it on purpose. I wrote a check. But, and that's another thing. It's like, and my brother does the same shit. It's like when things need to get done, like... Y'all just don't give a fuck. And it's the little things that really irritate me. Like, you had one job, hand the fucking check. It's coming out of my account. You couldn't even hand the check over. It's like you do that shit on purpose so that it's even more late. So I have to pay even more. Like, it's like vindictive, evil, little shit that so easily can be mistaken for a mistake. Like, oh, I forgot. No, you didn't because I know you better than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the type of shit I'm talking about. They do this shit on purpose. So I'm just like, I had to vent. I had to get it out. Y'all know everything with this situation anyways, but like, just pray for me because I don't feel like catching another charge over this fat ass. Ooh, she's calling me fat ass again. So mean. Yeah, and like, I don't even like, Part of me doesn't even want to do the court shit because I like being in control of like when you can get the kids. And I know that sounds bad, but my kids aren't happy when they go over there. Like, you know, I love his grandma and I respect his mom, but like it's a smaller, much smaller living space with no AC. We live in Florida. There's been many problems, many red flags. I don't like, I don't want my kids to have to go and spend an entire weekend out there an entire week. Red flags. Like what are these red flags at grandma's house? I really want to know what goes down at grandma's house. Is anyone else curious? Like there must be like some sort of a gangbang brothel slash drug house. I mean, what could possibly be worse at grandma's house? Then what goes on at Juliana's house? Like, I'd rather do it where, like, okay, yeah, you can pick the park, you know, and take them to hang out with your family, and then they come home to mommy. Or one night off, one day off, you know. But I try so damn hard to, like, and I let so much shit slide. And then I watch all these other people and I'm like, 
and I thought this man loved me? Like, you can't love a woman that you watch break her back for her family and you not even want to provide. I've never... Come on, girl. Like, you also watched your husband break his back to clean the house, cook. Like, there was a point there when he had that last job where she was so mad that he had a job and that she had to look after the kids. He's like, don't worry about it. Like, just let it go and I'll go to work and when I get home, I'll clean everything and I'll do everything. Like, did he get thanks for that? Like, I really hope that she praised him for doing that. I really hope that she did because, I mean, you can't have a really healthy relationship if you're not, you know, acknowledging the things that your partner does for you. I had a man take care of me. I've never had a man do anything nice for me. And I see all my friends and their relationships and I'm like, what the fuck? It's kind of weird seeing her like this because she's like, I've never had a man, you know, no one's ever looked after me. But yeah, she swears back and blue like she could steal any of your men. You know, the other day she went on live and she was like, oh, you don't like my, what was it? Oh, I need a boob job. She's like, oh, I'm going to go and add your boyfriend. Like she's assuming that these boyfriends would actually wanting to do with her. Girl, you are crazy. There's not many men that would take this attitude. You know, men, when they're in a relationship, they want someone that... Like, men have egos. They want to be told how fantastic they are and, you know, how good they are at everything. Like, you have to do that for your man just so that... Well, you don't have to do it for your man, but, like, you know, it's how they feel good about themselves. Like, it's how you motivate a man is you give them praise. It's like a child. <laughs> this sounds so terrible and I sound, like, so anti-men right now, but I'm not. But, you know... When they do something for you, you acknowledge it. And I know it sucks because it's like, oh, you know, you know, men do the dishes and they're like, they want a cookie for it because they've done the dishes. He do the dishes every fucking day. But it's not the point. Like, you still give them praise because you would hope that they're going to give you praise for doing the same thing. You know, everybody wants to be acknowledged for the things that they do. And I feel like that's where they sort of lack because he forgets to say, you know, thanks for everything you've done. But she also doesn't say that either. So, like, you know, yeah, she brings money to the table and she looks after the kids. But, like, this dude went to jail for you. How many men are going to go to jail for another woman? He went to jail for you and he, like, cooks and cleans. He is basically your bitch and you're saying he's done nothing for you. I was literally living in a bubble for 10 years thinking this was normal, making excuses. And that shit fucking hurts. Like, I'm tired of having to work getting paid. So I have to work despite how I feel because I have four kids that depend on me. And, like, that's a scary feeling when, you know, like, everything's so uncertain with your relationship. I wasn't trying to cry, but I cry when I'm mad. <laughs> but I am in my feelings a little bit because it's just like, I don't think that I fucking deserve this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I go above and beyond for the people I love. Like, above and fucking beyond. And I can't get a fucking breadcrumb, no pun intended, from this bitch. And I'm so tired of being respectful. I'm so tired of everybody, like, everybody around me that doesn't like know us like that everyone says like oh he seems like such a good guy like what happened i painted him that way you know this is kind of sad because it, it reiterates the fact that their lives are all so fake you know like all the time she'll post pictures and be like you know bread loves me you know when they get back together it's like date night he can't take his eyes off me and He's so amazing and it's like to sell it to her followers that she has this fantastic life. But then the second they have problems, she's like, you know, I paint him to be good. Why are you lying? Like you, you sit there and you say, I'm so honest with everybody and, you know, I share my real life and you might think I'm crazy because I share everything. But obviously you don't. Like you just admitted that you paint him out to be different than what he is. So why? Why do you lie? But I'm saying like... You got four kids and you keep lying about the little itty bitty paycheck you are making because you're doing what? You're gambling. Because that's more important than your kids. And then he had the nerve inside to say, that's my money. I'll do with it as I please. You can't tell me what to do with my money. Like, I haven't been controlled with my money this entire time. I don't.
don't get that choice. When I get, when I get paid, I don't get to say, you know what, like, I don't feel like paying for the kids. I don't feel like providing and feeding my children. I don't feel like school supplies. That was easily for all my kids to go back to school, $1,500. Do you think I got a single cent from their dad? No, Zinnia's birthday. I paid for everything, gifts, cake, ice cream. Dad showed up with nothing. Like, I don't get that choice. I think she's kind of forgets here as well. Like, dad showed up with nothing. You guys are a team. That's what mom does. Like, I don't think my kid, my dad, like my kid's dad, you know, when I get presents and stuff, like that's kind of my job to go and get the presents and everything. So half the time, I think he's just as surprised when they open up the presents as what they are. Like, he really doesn't have a clue. Like, I'll tell him, but he probably forgets by then. But, you know, I get all the presents and I wrap them and stuff. But, like, you know, she's like, dad shows up, but he did nothing. There are a lot of kids that don't even have a dad that shows up. Like, he doesn't even show up. Like, you've got to be grateful for what you have as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's a very involved dad. There are a lot of kids that don't have a dad. Like, just keep this in mind. Yeah, that's why I came out here. Because I'm like, dude, you're going to make me fucking lose it. Like, I'm literally going to lose it. And then he started doing that, like, manipulation shit. Because I'm like, but then I'm wrong if I take the car back. If I take the car from you and you can't get to your job, then I'm wrong. Because I paid for the car and I can sell the car and get my money back. Then I'm wrong. And he's like, well, fine. I'll call my mom to get me a ride, but don't be trying to kick me out because it's raining right now. He's like, you're not going to kick me out in the rain. I'll call for a ride. You think he's really going to call for a ride? If you know he's not going to call for a ride, give him a fucking ride. <laughs> Get him in the car and drive him yourself. It's not that hard. Just drive him yourself or call his mother for him. Like, it's this back and forth arguing. Neither of them actually want the other person to leave. But they just want to get their shit together. Go and see a counsellor. Get your shit together for the sake of your kids. Like, come on. No. So I was like, I'm just going to go sit in my Jeep because... My fucking babe is out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just fucking tired, y'all. And I've had so many people. Hopefully there's something. I've had so many people messaging me lately like, I'm so proud of you. Like, you're so successful and you've got it all together. And I'm just thinking, I really don't. But it feels good to hear that because it, it shows that, like, I'm trying and it's paying off. But, y'all, I'm tired. Do people really message her this stuff? Like, do people that message this stuff actually watch her lives or actually follow her life in any shape or form at all? And it's, I swear, it's like the little things that'll fucking make you blow. Cause I'm just like, for three weeks, I'm like, it's all right. Like turn the other cheek, Juliana. Like you don't really need his money. Every time I get my hopes up, like, okay, yeah, he's got a job, he's working. And he says he's gonna help somehow. Doesn't happen, turn the other cheek. Now, if you're a millionaire and you're making like $50,000 a month and like your husband's a landscaper, probably making maybe like a thousand, not even that, probably like $800 a week is a landscaper, right? So it's like laboring. So I would say like $800 to $1,000 a week. But you're sitting there saying, oh, well, I make $50,000 a month. Wouldn't you just let your husband have his $800 a week for play money? Like, would you even make him contribute? Like, if he's your husband, he's at home, and he's looking after the kids and, like, doing the mopping and stuff. If I was making $50,000 a month and my husband got a job that was making, like, $500 to $800 a week, I'd be like, babe, you have that. You have that. You go and do whatever you want with that. Like, that's your play money. You know, like, people, like, rich husbands give their wives way more than that every week, and they don't even have to work for it. Like, if you were a millionaire, if you were truly a millionaire, which we know she's not, but... Let's just pretend that she is. If she was a millionaire, why would she want him to pay $800, like from his $800 a week? You know what I mean? Like if you're making $15,000 a month, would you even ask him to pay $200 for daycare? 
I don't know. We obviously know that that's not true and that she isn't a million dollars. She's making probably two and a half thousand dollars a week, maximum, maybe two grand a week. And that's not even taking out tax. So turn the other cheek. And for the fourth week in a row, and then you have the nerve to get an attitude with me because I call you out on your bullshit? Nah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what my friend told me too, like... Okay, so I'm just going to move it over to the next snippet, but I just want to say, if you can hear a lawnmower in the background, I'm really sorry. Like... My kids go to school, my husband's at work, I get the day off and I'm like, oh, I'm going to record a video. My neighbor's like, fuck no, you're not, because I'm going to mow the lawns. So I don't care. I'm just going to play through it and I really hope that you guys can still hear it. But here's the, this is the next snippet that I had sent to me. I've been taking care of you. And then he's always like, you don't respect me. You don't respect me as a man. How am I supposed to? You don't provide for me. You don't take care of me. You don't protect me. You don't do shit. You're a... Do you really think that she needs protecting? <laughs> like, what the fuck? It would be like protecting a bear. Why would she need, like, if you need to be protected and you're saying, like, you know, protect me, protect me, like, you provide for me, do this for me, and she wants him to be this man, but then she takes away any ounce of manliness he has. Like, his balls would be like little tiny, tiny, teeny peas right now. Like, there is probably no testosterone left in his body. Probably growing boobs, just saying. A fucking bill. Exactly. In front of his mom? Does he do what? And that's the thing too, like you and your family put me in jail after you beat my ass and I still let your mom come to my house and sit on my couch and I respect the fuck out of her. That's the sad part. Like when she comes over here to do my girl's hair, like I am so respectful and I don't have to be because you fucking betrayed the fuck out of me. All of y'all did. I actually agree with her here. Personally, if that was me, like, I understand that what she was doing was out of control, but why would you call the police on, like, your daughter-in-law or your, you know, your grandkids' mother? Like, I just feel like that was out to me. You know, if there's a problem and they're having, like, an altercation, whatever, I'm pretty sure that grandma or mum could have just stepped in between it all but instead they called the cops i don't know how to put in jail that's fucked like if they did that to me like obviously i wouldn't be scrapping with my husband in the front yard but if they had done that to me i wouldn't have her in my house i'd be like you fuckers at the end of the day they're family like who calls the police on family unless it's a completely out of control situation like i feel like that could have been settled without that and i do agree with her like i probably she's a bigger person than I am because there's no way after getting put in jail that that would be mortifying yeah I mean she kind of got herself there in the first place because you don't punch your husband definitely don't do it in front of your kids like she was out of control I wasn't there but like even from what she was saying like she was out of control he's out of control too but I just feel like to call the cops is so disrespectful to her like she is the mother of his kids like I just can't imagine I just can't imagine it. And then having them at your house, like I get it, they're coming over to do her hair and like be a favor, like do a favor for her. But at the same time, like I don't think I'd want them in my house again. Even if I had done the wrong thing and acted up, but calling the police, I just feel like it's not exactly something she deserved. Like, like I fair enough, like put her in jail cell, like to make a cool down. But they've got to consider the fact that like all her business is out there because she is insta famous. Like everything that like affects her income and things like that. I just feel, I don't know. I just think it was the wrong move from them. And I think she's a bigger person. Like if, this, if think about it, like if your mother-in-law had you put in jail, would you want her sitting on your couch? I don't know. I don't think I could get over that. I just don't think I could. And still I'd bite my tongue and I'd turn the other cheek for these people. <clears throat> exactly. Ugh. The fuck? Someone actually wrote in the comments, move to Georgia and build a private life with Julia. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> what the hell? I'm just like... Mm -hmm. 
Her follow is really hype. But I had to vent about it because y'all know how it goes. Like when you're dealing with somebody that doesn't see anything wrong in what they do, like they'll make you feel crazy all day long. Like you have no reason to be upset. You're you're nagging. You're you're being over dramatic right now. The way she's describing it, they literally sound like the same people. And that shit will make me go insane. Because I know I'm not. Like, I see... I see other people in their relationships, like my friends, that have healthy relationships. And, like, it literally breaks me because it's like... What have you been putting up with all this time? Like, why did you do that? You know? And I wish I would have seen it a lot sooner. That's why I have to walk away because like since like the last year, I've just become so much more like self-aware to like what gaslighting is, like what reactive abuse is, like really like. I don't think she'd be half as bad as what she is had she not got all these followers. You know what I mean? Like, I'm reading the comments, like, here's the problem, not you. Like, don't deal with that. You deserve better. Your person's coming along. Absolutely. Like, there's no recognition for some of the things that she said to him. Like, let's go back to that first live that I ever posted on my page. You know, that was horrendous. And they just, to them, that's normal. Like, when that live was happening, they were all laughing about it. They are like, ha ha, so funny. Make him apologize. Like, make him say it again. Like, she was, like, belittling him in front of people so I kind of understand where he comes from when he's like you know you make me feel like I'm not a man because that would be so embarrassing diving fucking nose deep into narcissists and all that and so like when you become aware of it you start seeing it whereas before like I was justifying a lot of his behavior like I was making excuses for it and I wasn't noticing it the way that I do now and that's why, like, now I have to walk away because I call it out when I see it, and that makes him so angry. Sorry, I just had to switch over to the next snippet. And, like, he took he took the kids' car seats out of his car and to clean them and left them in the rain for several days and then told me, like, I was just supposed to go buy new ones. I'm like, like, this is the shit I'm talking about. You have absolutely no regard or respect for me and my money. So. It's so overwhelming. And like. I don't know. This more It's like I felt it coming because this morning, like, my anxiety was so bad. And I was talking to Julia about it and I just got right to work. I was like, I know you don't feel like working, but like, you don't have a choice. You can't work based on how you feel. Like you have to work based on what you want and you know what you want for your kids. So I don't get a choice to just throw my hands up and walk away. I don't think so, no. I'm assuming he's still gambling because he gets paid. He works full time and gets paid every Friday and has not given me a dime. He's like, oh, I had to give my grandma money for the phone bill. I'm like, well, how much is your little fucking Metro phone bill? $45 a month? Like, you're not making more than $45 a week? There's like another example of her just belittling him. Imagine trying to be a man. And being treated that way. I understand it. Like, yeah, he should be handing over money. But why has she got to belittle him like this? Like, why is everything so public? I just cannot imagine being in that sort of relationship where my partner was sitting online talking shit about me in front of 315 strangers and belittling me. Could you imagine if Brad was doing this? If Brad was going live and being like, you know, she's so self-centered. All she does is buy fashion over clothes and like looks at herself in the mirror that would be so degrading so i feel like he would be feeling the exact same way
I just like the only thing that keeps me going is like knowing that when my kids look back, they're going to know that mommy worked her ass off and that they can learn from me and my kids are going to be fucking hard workers. Because I got it done, despite how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. Someone just wrote, she de he doesn't deserve those kids. Yeah, and like, that's why I haven't really done anything yet with it. Because like I said the other day, like when people were asking... Like you made it happen, he, not daddy. How he is like on a regular basis. I was like, everything's been good. Um, but I think that that would change. Like if I were to move on with somebody else, like I think that it could get really ugly. So I'm going to eventually have to just lawyer up and get it out of the way. Because like if I were to like meet somebody new and be in a relationship, I think that he would come for everything everything that he could to make my life hell. Yeah, and that's why y'all like, I don't even know how to explain it, but Narcissists tend oh, to not no, care about hard. their kids. That's why oh, every single bag sale, every single order on my website, like it means a lot because. And boom, there it is. So obviously she knows that the whole, I'm a millionaire. Look at all the things I have. I work so hard in my company. You can be like me. She knows that doesn't work. You know, that doesn't work for sales. What works for sales is pity sales. And she knows that because when Becca was working underneath her, she was like, you know, tell people that you live in a shelter. Like, make people feel sorry for you. Like, let them know that if they buy a product, they're going to help you get out of the shelter. And that's where Juliana started. That's how she got so far. You know, she had her husband in jail. She's trying to raise a baby on her own. She's got no money, nowhere to go. And so people were like, oh, you know, and they would buy things from her to help her rank up because they're like, oh, this will help her. You know, a lot of us are guilty of buying these products just to help someone out. I know I spent a lot of money when Becca was in her shelter because I was like, oh, you know, I want to help her. Like, I felt so bad for her. And it's all just a freaking joke. Like, it's not even happening. Well, I mean, Becca was in a shelter, but they, you know, exaggerate how bad things are so that they can try and get these pity sales. And obviously, Juliana knows that it worked back when she was pregnant with, the Yuli with um, Cecilia. And then, you know, it's tanked when she was just like, I'm better than everyone. I'm so good. I'm a millionaire to your house. People are like, well, which doesn't need help now. So people don't feel obliged to buy from her. But when she's on her lives crying, people are like, oh, you know, I feel really bad. I've got to help her out. Like, I've got to get bread out of the house. Like, it's a bad situation. I'm going to buy from her. So it's it's a marketing ploy. Like, we know this is a marketing ploy. But I didn't. I knew it would not be long until it went back to this thing. Anyways, guys, that I'm going to wrap this up because it's at the half hour mark and I've got to go and pick my kids up from school. But I'll catch you back here for the next part. Bye.